Hello friends, welcome to Programming Concepts. My name is Amit and this is part 11 of our What's New in .NET 7 and C Sharp 11 series. In today's video, we are diving into one of the exciting new features in C Sharp 11, Generic Attributes. This new capability allows developer to define attributes using generics, which can make your code cleaner and more reusable. Let's break it down and see how it works in real life scenarios. If you want to learn .NET Core from scratch, you can watch our dedicated playlist created for that purpose. I will share the link in the description. All right, let's quickly see what Microsoft have to say about generic attributes. So as per Microsoft, when generics were introduced in C Sharp 2.0, attribute classes were not allowed to participate. Generic is a very common term, whether we talk about .NET framework or .NET standard. So previously, when we talk about generic, for example, you must have heard about generic list, etc. But this generic concept was not related to attribute classes, or you can say there is no support for generic around attribute classes. All right. Further, Microsoft added, we can make the language more composable by removing this restriction. The .NET Core runtime has added support for generic attributes. Now, all that's missing is support for generic attributes in the compiler. On the Microsoft page, they also specify the motivation behind adding support for generic attributes. Let's quickly read that as well, then we will move on to the practical examples. So currently, attribute authors can take system.type as a parameter and have user pass type of expression to provide the attribute with types that it needs. However, outside of analyzer, there is no way for an attribute author to constrain what types are allowed to be passed to an attribute via type of. If attribute could be generic, then attributes author could use the existing system of type parameter constraint to express the requirement for types they take as input. So here Microsoft provided one problem which they tried to achieve with the addition of this feature. Don't worry if you don't get, get this definition as of now, I will cover that everything in just a bit. So let's go to Visual Studio. And here I already created an application in .NET 6. Let's see how things work prior to .NET 7 and what were the challenges. So first let's create a class employee. Let's say we have three properties, first and last name and whether employee is permanent or contractual. So prop tab tab, public nullable string, first name getter and setter accessor, public nullable string last name, getter and setter accessor, public boolean is permanent getter and setter accessor. Let's add another class here department. I'm going to create class here only for demo purposes so that complete code should be in the same class for comparison. All right, so public class department. And let's say it has property department name. So public nullable string department name getter and setter accessor. Now, Let's say we need to display some information for both these classes. So first let's create one interface. So type public interface I display content. And let's say it has one method content writer. So void content writer object obj. Now we need to create two classes who owns the responsibility to display content of object of these classes. So let me quickly add these two classes. So type public class display employee content. Inherit with I display content and implement interface. So within interface uh, where employee is equal to obj as employee if employee dot is permanent employee, then display message, let's say console dot write line, dollar within curly braces employee dot first name space within curly braces employee dot last name is our permanent employee. 
else just copy and paste right line statement and change permanent to contractual simple let me quickly add another class so public class display department content inherit with i display content implement interface then within method where department is equal to obj as department console dot right line dollar department name is within curly braces department dot department name simple nothing complicated these two classes taking responsibility to display some information or in real life project you can say they will perform some action now let's try to use these two classes let's go to program.cs class let's create object of employee and department so where employee is equal to new employee within curly braces first name is equal to amit last name is equal to rawat is permanent employee is equal to true next where department is equal to new department then within curly braces department name let's say eng for engineering now we need to display content so display employee content let's name the variable display employee content is equal to new display employee content then display employee content dot content writer pass the employee object similarly for department display department content let's name display department content is equal to new display department content then display department content dot content writer and pass the object of department then let's run the program see working as expected so far so good as both these classes inherit from i display content we can further optimize this code let me create a method called display content then within this method i display content make it nullable and name it display content is equal to obj then switch employee such that new display employee content then department such that new display department content and finally return null for other so underscore such that null next if display content double equal to null then console dot write line let's say invalid object else display content dot content writer and pass the object and let's delete the objects which we created earlier to display content now let's run the program and you can see we have same output so far so good now one problem with this code if we add another class which inherit from i display content then we want to modify display content method let's quickly cover that as well so i already created a class for that let me just copy and paste it so we have added city class and uh, display content display city content class to display its content now to display its content we have to modify display content method so let's do that so add city such that new display city content now this method support display city content class so let me just copy department object change department to city also change class name change deprt to city name and eng to let's say new delhi 
and let's use display content city and let's run the program and we have city name displayed so every time we have new class we have to modify this method let's try to resolve this with the help of attribute and reflection so let me create an attribute so to do that let's create another class and inherit with attribute class so type public class display custom content attribute and inherit from attribute class here we append name with attribute so this is not mandatory but it is good practice to use attribute at the end of the class name if you are inheriting it from the attribute class next let's create a property of type type so public type custom type and it will only have get accessor let's quickly create a constructor which accept parameter of type type so public display custom content attribute and let's say the parameter type of type then assign custom type is equal to type that's it our custom attribute class is ready let me use this with our classes so on top of employee class type display custom content attribute type of display employee content in this example the employee class is marked with display custom content attribute indicating that when displaying an instance of this class the display employee content class will be used to determine how the content is rendered all right so just copy and paste above department and city class and change class name accordingly next we need to use reflection in our display content method so where attributes is equal to obj dot get type dot get custom attributes which accepts type of display custom content attribute then inherit column false here we are trying to fetch attribute if object class is inherited with display custom content attribute then if let's say attributes dot length double equal to one and attributes index zero is display custom content attribute and let's name it custom attribute then leave it else console dot right line invalid content class type now if class is inherited by display custom content attribute then where class type is equal to custom attribute dot custom type then where display class content ref is equal to activator dot create instance pass class type as i display content here we will get the class reference responsible to display content class then if display class content reference is not null then display class content reference dot content writer pass obj and let's run the program and you can see we have the desired output and it resolved the problem of modifying display content method so if we add another class say company then we can create display content class and we can decorate it with display custom content attribute simple extremely simple so till now we have implemented everything in dotnet 6 let's see the problem this implementation have now the problem with this approach is this generic approach is not type safe what does this means this means let's say 
uh, within let's say for employee class instead of passing display employee content to display custom content attribute if I pass let's say string it will accept this see there is no compile time error and within dotnet 6 there is no mechanism to control this and if I run this program I will get runtime error To resolve such scenarios, Microsoft came up with generic attributes in .NET 7. Let me change project file and change target framework from .NET 6 to .NET 7. And let me modify display custom content attribute and make it generic. So pass T as type and write where T colon I and we don't need any constructor declaration so delete it let's modify display custom content attribute used above classes instead of passing it as parameter define it as generic type let's do it for all three classes We need a slight modification in display content method to make it work. Let's do that as well. So just append type within smaller than, greater than, or not equal to sign. Change next line. And then attribute zero dot get type dot get generic type definition double equals to type of display custom content attribute change class type so where class type is equal to attribute 0 dot get type dot get generic arguments index 0 and that's all and if I try to pass any other class which doesn't inherit from my display content I will get compile time error so let's try to pass string see we have an error the type string cannot be used to type parameter t in the generic type or method display custom content attribute. There is no implicit reference conversion from string to i display content. Simple, extremely simple. So that's it from this video. I hope you like our content. If you have any queries related to the content of this video, feel free to ask me in the comments. Thank you for watching.